State officials confirmed the first two cases of the West Nile virus in the state this year in Okfuskie and McIntosh counties. The mosquitoes that carry West Nile generally prefer hot, dry weather, but the recent heavy rains have created a large breeding area for all kinds of insects, including mosquitoes. And the emergence of the longest living insect is already providing deafening noise in some parts of the state. It's a chorus from nature only heard like this in Oklahoma every 17 years. The 17-year periodical cicadas are making their presence known after being underground for nearly two decades. The insects make their way up the trees after the soil reaches a temperature of 64 degrees. What you're hearing is the mating call of the male insects who along with the females cover tree limbs in blankets. The noise made by the cicadas is among the loudest of all insect-produced sounds. For humans, the mating call is the only real bothersome thing the insects produce. The females will cut slits into the bark of a tree to deposit her eggs, which may cause damage to small limbs. Once the cicadas emerge, their cacophony will last about two weeks. That's how long it takes for all the eggs to hatch. The Noble Research Center on the campus of Oklahoma State University in Stillwater is where we found bug expert Tom Royer, an OSU entomologist. After about six weeks or so, the eggs hatch and drop to the ground. Uh, the nymphs drop to the ground and go in, find their roots to feed on and spend underground 17 years. Royer says the emergence of cicadas, particularly the 17-year species, was delayed somewhat by the recent rain and cooler temperatures. But the wet weather has already sped up the hatching of mosquitoes and ticks. Royer says all Oklahomans should be wary of ticks whose populations dwindled during the drought and are now growing in large numbers. Of course, everybody knows about Rocky Mountain spotted fever and Lyme disease, but there's other diseases that some of the ticks in Oklahoma can um, transmit, and we have to really be careful of them. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say a resident of Payne County is only the second person in the United States confirmed to have contracted the rare bourbon virus from a tick. In Kansas, where the first case was confirmed, the patient died. The Oklahoma resident recovered. Symptoms include fever, severe muscle and joint pain, fatigue, disorientation, diarrhea, and a rash. The Oklahoma State Department of Health says since the disease is new, it's not yet known how significant the illness may be in the state. The effect of West Nile virus carried by mosquitoes has been significant in Oklahoma in recent years. In 2012, there were 161 non-fatal cases and 15 deaths caused by the virus. In 2013, the number dropped from 76 cases and eight deaths. And last year, during the drought, there were only 17 cases and no deaths. This year's flooding and wet weather may mean more cases of West Nile. Bernard Dindy heads up mosquito control for the Tulsa Health Department. 15 mosquito traps already show the mosquito population is exploding. We also use those traps to test those mosquitoes for the West Nile virus, and we've also detected um, in three of our trap sites is that virus, and that usually doesn't show up till uh, July. Dindy says because of all the rain, the department could not begin spraying to kill mosquitoes until this week. Now the spray trucks are out in force in the evenings to try and reduce the mosquito population and the risk of West Nile virus. Dindy urges everyone to use DEET insect repellent when outside and do their part to get rid of breeding areas for the insects. Cleaning their gutters, emptying uh, kiddie pools, uh, make sure that their uh, pool is properly drained and if they have it covered, make sure the cover is not holding any standing or stagnant water, empty flower pots, uh, uh, their pet water daily, almost every day. Summer doesn't officially begin until July 21st, but from the sound of things, it's going to be a buggy season.